Hello everybody. So as the new session starts, new final years become new interns and uh, you know you get aware that you have to write an exam at the end of your year called NEET and your mind just goes into a jumble. How do I start? Where do I start? Like unlike you know first year, second year, third year, final year, you don't have limited subjects. You have everything. Each and everything that you have studied from the first day of your BDS till now. Everything has to be done. Where to start, where to end. And lots of queries, lots of messages, lots of calls, ma'am, how should we start? So this is just a small presentation to simplify the process of starting and then how to continue. So let's see how we need to start or where we need to start to study. So studying for an entrance exam is vastly different from studying from what you have been doing till now. That is studying for your university exams. Why? There are many factors. Those include one. This is a subjective versus objective exam. So in subjective, there is a scope for what we call tukka. You know, okay, let's say fluorides. I know something about fluorides. I can fill enough pages. I will get enough marks. I will pass. But in exam, they won't ask you like that. They will ask you which year was this fluoride done over here. Over there, there is no scope for not knowing enough stuff. You need to know each and every nook and corner of it. That's what, when we study for our first year, second year university exams, we focus on these things. One, the most commonly asked questions, we sit with a list of questions, okay, this was asked, anatomy of the posterior triangle. That is called studying from exam point of view. We accumulate just the relevant information which is required for us to go to next step. Whereas a studying for an entrance exam is completely different. They will be just picking one small line somewhere from your standard textbook and going to ask you for that. So how do you study for that? Whenever we study for our university exams, it is never in depth. It is a sort of a vertical sort of reading where we are reading heading, subheading, few lines about that. Whereas for your university, your NEET exam, you need to do horizontal reading wherein each and everything is important. Anything from anywhere can be asked to you in the exam and you don't get to say, ma'am, this is out of syllabus. So today, I have just, you know, segregated the general advice that is given to students how to study on an entrance exam into general advice as well as specific. Specific as in how to approach your subjects, which books to study, what to study for, sequence, all those things. But general things, whenever these things can be, you know, real for any competitive exam. Whenever you're studying for your competitive exam, how to plan your day, how to go about your routine, time management, distractions, how to keep the stress at bay, how to stay motivated, how to do smart work versus hard work. So these are the general things which are true for any entrance exam that you may be studying. Okay, so first and foremost, you need to make yourself into a routine. Okay, we have been studying on and off just before the exam study pattern will not work for us anymore, which is probably effective for some of us in the university exams, but not for MCQ exams. Okay, so you need to come up with a routine. Let's say you're an intern. For an intern, one or one and a half additional hour at the beginning of the day, instead of getting up at seven, just taking bath and rushing to college, if you get up at six and use that one or one and a half hours to study, that is cum cumulatively, it's around, let's say if you're studying for one and a half hours, it comes to around 11 hours a week. It, it becomes significant over the period of time. So you need to find small nooks and corners in your time and fall into a routine. Okay. Once you fall into a routine, your body gets used to it. They say that it takes 21 days to form any new habit. Fall into a routine, make a routine for yourself. Find out your, the times in which your studying is most effective. And then according to that, you can make your routine. Okay. I'm sure you all must have the picture here. It depicts the Pavlov's famous experiment where he used to ring a bell and give food to the uh, dog and see the salivatory responses. So the moment you know the bell used to ring even if the food is not there the dog started salivating. After a couple of days even if he heard the assistant's footsteps to ring the bell even before ringing the bell the salivation starts. So that is how our brain and body works. We get used to stuff our body starts preparing for it. So if you are used to getting up at 7 I can't get up at 6. Try do it for a few a days, few hours and then it will work for you. So definitely falling into a new routine of studying continuously 4 hours, 6 hours a day is difficult but not impossible. Slow and steady you need to get into a routine for yourself. This will be achieved more easily if you have a fixed sleep routine. Once you go to sleep 
please make sure that you are sleeping and not looking at your phone, scrolling, browsing because that is like a bottomless pit. Once you start Instagram, go on to small uh, videos here and there, Facebook, there is no end to it. So keep your phone aside, have a fixed sleep routine, fixed study routine. Don't try to jingle it too much. Today two hours in the morning I studied, evening not I'll, I'll not study. Today morning I didn't study, evening I'll study. So don't go for things like that. Having a fixed routine always helps you to more streamline your study process. Time management. <clears throat> we can't go on studying one chapter for 10 days. We have limited number of time, let's say six months or eight months, okay, before we have to finish at least the first visit of all the subjects, okay, that is 19 subjects. So 19 into six, so you have around, you know, if you have six months, you have in one month, you have to finish three subjects. So you have to be smart about it. You have to manage your time, okay. Also, once you're sitting on a place and studying, you need to make sure that you're making the best out of your time. If you know, if you feel, if you're staring at a page for last 10 minutes studying is not happening the productivity level is low so in that case you need to take a break and come back because studying looking at that page for one hour is not going to be helpful take rather 10 minutes tea have come back and make sure that the time which you're using is productive and used well for that you can use the apps like there is an app called pomodoro app or you can use a forest app there are many time management apps which are available which will increase productivity and make sure that if you are studying for one hour you are putting in one hour of effort not that you are 25 minutes you are distracted and let's say 35 minutes you are studying so make sure that whatever time you are putting it you are using it effectively distractions needless to say i'm not saying that you need to become totally antisocial or you know just delete all the apps on your phone no but there has to be a limit fortunately now you know all the apps like instagram facebook they have a time um, limit you can set yourself a time limit per day it is a daily time limit and once you cross that time limit it gives you an option it tells you that okay you have you have spent 20 minutes on instagram today so you need to ration your time that in I need to minimize the time for my social media or any other distraction be it and then increase the time for your studying you need to have a clean and clear table don't have a very cluttered table okay clutter breeds chaos so try to have a clean and clear table try to stay away from distractions distractions may not only be social media let's say you stay in a house where people keep coming and going very frequently so how to go about that so if possible if it works out for you you can go in and join a library, you can go there, study there so that you know, like minded people, everybody is studying, one, you get motivated, two, there are no distractions. So whatever is your scenario and whatever is your distraction, make sure that you know, how, how much ever it is possible, you stay away from those distractions breaks as i said earlier nobody can study non-stop even the top of the first ranker has not studied 12 hours they say in their interviews and all you listen okay we study for 12 hours a day 14 hours a day they are not studying they don't sit at 9 in the morning and get up at 9 in the evening breaks are important after the human brain has a limited attention span after let's say half an hour to 40 minutes the brain starts wandering here and there so it is very very important to take breaks it not only eliminates your stress but it keeps the rhythm going and also it makes sure that you come back and you learn the uh, stuff whatever you are doing much faster with much more efficacy rather than you know if you just try to do it in one continuous stretch consistency <clears throat> after studying for one week i have started studying i've studied for one week this is not my cup of tea this is not going to happen you need to make a decision that i am going to study for xyz exam it need not be only neat mds it can be any exam but once you have made the decision you need to stick to it you need to be consistent about it you need to study each and every day even if you study for 10 days for a minute 10 minutes in a day let's say you are having a bad day there's no time too many patients covid duty whatever you need to study each and every day. You need to go back to the books to make sure that that flow is not broken. It is intact and as much as possible, try to stick to your time routine, whatever you're making. So as I've depicted in this picture, the goal may be very far off, but you just need to take two steps at a time. So you take the two steps and then next two steps and then next two steps. You need not look at, you know, I have to, oh, I have so far to go. How will I finish it? You just look at, okay, I have to do this chapter today. I have to do this subject in this week. I have to do these three subjects in this month. And that's how it becomes easier. Break down your goal into smaller achievable goals, which are easier. Make your mind think 
that you know okay this is possible rather than looking oh god 19 exam 19 subjects neat mbs exam it looks quite impossible so that is not how it will work out just look at the next two steps what i have to do and then you will get there cannot understand this point stay motivated until and unless you have made up your mind and you are motivated yes i want that seat i want my government seat i want a good clinical seat and i am going to work hard for it then only you can reach there okay the picture is of nick vujishish he is a motivational speaker ted speaker he gives excellent videos on youtube he was born this way no hands no legs but the things he does he is totally self sufficient he does swimming he does exercise gymming everything okay so ups and downs are normal i don't say that you know life has to be like a graph okay ups and downs will be there but make sure that at every single point where you go down come up keep your motivation up listen the 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 world is at your fingertips now there are so many good motivational speakers there are motivational lectures there are channels for students where you can go in and get you know your daily drop of motivation okay so make sure that you are motivated towards your goal yes i have to do it i will do it so the the word persist should be behind your journey i am going to persist whatever happens some days i may or may not get time to study i may be lagging a bit behind my schedule but i am going to make up for it i am going to work hard and i am going to get there so that is how if you stay motivated nothing is going to be impossible okay now let's come to dental specific how to study for neat mds exams again you know uh, if you go on to youtube and just google how to study how just search how to study for neat mds exams there are so many videos i came across few videos which say only one book is enough which say okay two three books are enough okay there is no one size fits all i am not going to say that you know only one book is not enough or only one book is enough but i am going to guide you that depending on the type of student you are how you need to study okay again <clears throat> you know what to study there are so many things to study one of course are your textbooks two are your mcq books three okay shall i study only the synopsis and you know leave the textbook out okay can i study my senior notes or xyz printed notes which i have received from people who have been successful in their you know entrance exam or can i do only previous papers so the answer to this kind of question is if you have enough time that is if you are starting now for the Uh, December 2022 exam you have to do everything there is enough time and there is uh, no reason that can be given okay i didn't have time that's why i didn't do it if you have time and if time allows you have to do everything how let's get into it okay so as the picture over here shows any big building is going to be built on a strong foundation foundation for your exam comes from the textbooks If you have seen since 2018, since the time NBE has taken over and NEET is happening, the number of repeats have come down tremendously. From a place where there used to be, let's say, 50 to 60 percent repeats, now there are hardly 10 to 20 percent repeats. So that leaves us around 20 questions which are going to be same or which are going to be there in the previous exam. Rest of the 220 questions are going to be new. So how do I tackle these new questions? For that, you need to go back to textbooks. When I say textbooks, I don't mean that you know you have to read each and every single page of every textbook. No, that is not how it is going to work out for anybody. But yes, important topics, important chapters from standard textbook have to be done. Only when you have a good foundation can you have a good building, right? So textbooks are important, and then let's move on to the rest of the things. Okay, only if you do textbooks, you will know the answers. if you do only the mcq books you will know all the questions okay this question have come this is the answer but when a new question come the answer to that question will always be there in a textbook but not in your mcq book so there is no two ways to say that you have to do textbook until and unless you are just studying you are just starting you know let's say two or three months before the exam where you wherein you have no time but now if you are starting now for neat mds there is enough time you need to do the textbooks Now everybody asks, should I do the textbook first? Should I do the MCQ book first? Should I do the synopsis first? Should I do the questions first? Should I do the previous papers first? So the answer for that is different for basic subjects and different for clinical subjects. Let's see what the answer is. So for the basic subjects, it has been a very very long time since we read those things: anatomy, physiology. We may know the basic things, but we have forgotten the fine print. So I would always suggest that you need to go to the textbook first, read up. 
and then go to the synopsis. So synopsis tells you what all is important. You can um, read up those particular chapters from the textbook and then you go into when you have a sufficient knowledge base, you know what they are talking about and then you go on to solving the MCQs to apply to see that whatever you have read from the textbook or the synopsis, have you retained it? Have you understood it? And that is where the MCQs are important for a basic subject. After that, as and when you are doing the textbook, please take a note of the pictures and various diagrams that are there. So they are your new picture based questions that can come in the exam as well as make your own notes for each and every single subject. Whenever you are studying, you have to make your own notes. How to make notes? We'll come to that later. Okay. So once basic subjects are done, let's come to the clinical subjects. Now clinical subjects, if you are either a practicing uh, uh, dentist or let's say you are a fresh final year. Clinical subjects are something which we do through, you know, our doing, we remember much more. So I would suggest for a clinical subject, you need to go hand in hand. You can do MCQ book along with the textbook. No, no need to, you know, go into a detailed reading of the topic before you go on to the MCQ book. So first you can take, pick up your MCQ book and simultaneously you can do textbook. For example, I'm doing RPD. So read the first chapter here, read the first chapter here and then solve and then you can go on ahead with it. No need to do this one first. Same things again over here. Keep looking at the pictures because those are where your new image based questions will come from and keep taking notes. Now again the question which books to study. <clears throat> now there are two major MCQ books as far as dental MCQ books are concerned. I will not say that one is better than the other. Whichever suits you, whichever you feel is better, whichever uh, you know suits you or maybe your seniors have told this book is better, you can follow that. Both are good. Okay. But you need to stick to one of them. Make it as your base book and then you can add on to it. How to add on to it? For basics, any one is enough. You can do either one of them. For clinicals, only if time allows within the time frame that, is, that you have made or that has been given to you, if the time allows, you can do both the books, okay? But when you're doing both the books, whichever is your base book, you can take the other book and make notes from the other book so that the next time you do it, you are not going to go back to the second accessory MCQ book. You are going to do your main MCQ books and your notes. That's all. So if you are doing two MCQ books, let's say for even for basics or clinicals, clinicals, it is suggested but not compulsory. Even one is good enough. If you have time, if you're a fast reader, go for both and then make notes from you, whichever is your supplementary book. Uh, then there are many extra books. Again, only if time allows, there are a couple of good books for uh, certain subjects where, you know, not enough information is given in both the books. So they can be done. Mm, some examples are, let's say, Sharan for Ortho or Arvind Arora for Micro. So these are some books which can be done. Again, not compulsory, but uh, let's say you have finished one, two, both. Everything is done and you still have time. Then, then is the only time that you can go in for these books. And that too, again, you need to go in only for the important topics. Again, you can't later when you are revising, you will not be able to come back to these extra books. So any extra book that you are doing, anybody has suggested you for any subject, you need to make notes from it. Let's say I studied Sharan for ortho today. I am going to make notes so that next time when I revise ortho, I need not go back to Sharan and do the whole thing. I just need to do the thing which I have made in my notes. Okay, so that is the importance of your notes. Now let's come to notes. If you see the BDS next step, there is a whole blog on how to to make and how not to make notes. So I will not go into much detail over here, but I will tell you what your notes and how your notes should be very briefly today. Okay. So anything extra that you're doing apart from your base MCQ book, even if you're reading the textbook and if you find something, some fact which is not there in your basic, the one MCQ book that you're following, you need to make notes of it. Okay. So that is the first thing. What should be included in my notes? Anything extra other than the MCQ book. Then how your notes should be? They should be short and precise. You can't keep filling. If I want from Schaefer's, I can fill, you know, 10 notebooks out of it. But you need to master the arts of, art of making notes. You need to use points, diagrams, flowcharts and try to concise the information as much as important information in as little time and space as possible. Because frankly, if you have one full notebook of notes of oral pathology, that is not notes. That is again a study material that is not going to be useful for you at all. Okay. So the length of the notes is also important. 
Now your notes should be revision oriented. Please write it in a legible handwriting. You write, make some notes and when you come back, you should not spend 15 minutes trying to understand oh, what have I written here. So they should be legible. They should, you can use shorthand. Shorthand means, uh, let's say, you know, smaller, like for example, can be EX. So you can use shorthand, but you should be familiar with what you're making. Okay. And also they should be revision oriented. That means they should have important enough information from all the other things that you have done apart from your one mcq book so if you have referred any you have referred your textbook make notes if you have referred any extra book make notes if you have referred let's say the bds next app or any whichever mcq uh, app or uh, you know questions which you have not before come across make notes so add all those things to your notes which are not there in your basic mcq book so later whenever you're going for the second round of the subject do your mcq book do your app do your notes and that's it you don't have to go in for any textbook reading in the second round you don't have to go in for any let's say any extra book reading in the second round and don't you don't feel ki, oh first round i did both the books now there is no time to do both the books because until and unless you revise two or three times whatever you have done you may do full sharan okay but until and unless you revise you're not going to remember any of it by the end of your by the time it is time to give exam okay also, uh, your notes should be limited. What is the ideal length of your notes? It should not be more than 10 to 20 pages per subject. So by 10 pages, I mean 10 single sided pages. There are some subjects which are vast, for example, oral pathology or other subjects. You can finish them in, let's say, 20 pages, but it should not cross more than that. Shorter subject like DA or DH can be even shorter. So 20 pages is an ideal for a longer subject, 10 pages shorter subject, not more than that. Okay. Previous papers, yes, 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 because even though I said initially that hardly 10 to 20 percent of the questions are repeats, those 10 to 20 questions, if you don't get it right, you have already lost your edge in the competition. So those are the must know questions which you must and the competition starts beyond those 10 to 40 questions because that is something that everybody is going to know, everybody has done it and everybody, it is granted that everybody gets it right. Beyond that is where the competition begins. So if you don't have those 20 to 40 questions in your, you know, goal, you have already lost your edge. You have lost a significant rank due to a very simple thing which can be done very easily. So previous papers are important. The NEET started in 2017. The question papers are available from 2018 onwards. Must do. There is no, you can, uh, you know, do it. And two to three times if you revise, that should be more than enough. Smart work versus hard work. As I said, whenever you're reading something, no need to go into making laborious notes or no, <coughs> excuse me, no need to make, you know, go through each and every uh, word that is given in a textbook. You need to be smart about how you finish a given topic in a given amount of time. So that is how you have to work smart rather than hard. Of course, hard, but smart. Okay, and how you can work smart is with the help of your own customized timetable. Each and every person that is going to study for any competitive exam must, must have a timetable. It's not optional. Whether you're doing one book, two book, ten books, MCQs, whichever, whichever course you're following, you're doing self-study, whatever it is that you're doing, you need a timetable. Timetable is a must. The first and the foremost thing that a timetable must have is that it should be practical. Or let's say it should be realistic. I can't say that I will finish all the cysts of, our, let's say, uh, that are present in the oral path subject in one day. It is not very practical when you're going in for the first read. So it has to be practical. It has to be based on your capability. There is a XYZ person who can finish five chapters in a day, but I finish one chapter in a day. So it has to be customized. It has to be based upon your reading speed or let's say the type of learner you are. Are you a visual learner? Are you an auditory learner? So based on that, you have to customize your timetable. Okay. How many hours to study? You can start from, let's say, four to five hours a day. So that gives you morning one to one and a half hours and evening again, let's say two and a half to three, three and a half hours. That is how you start. Okay, whether you are an intern or you are a friend, uh, you know, starting again, that is how much time you have to take. But as the time progresses, you need to increase it, especially, uh, you know, people who have finished their internship, you have a lot of time in your hand, and you need to make the best use of it. Ideally, in an ideal situation, if you are studying for NEET MDS, it is not advised to do anything simultaneously, let's say clinic or anything else that you're doing simultaneously, you have one year, 
you give that one year for your NEET MDS. It may make a difference of 500 ranks for you, whether you get do the job or not. I understand that sometimes, you know, there are financial constraints and you need to do it. Agreed. But if that is not an issue for you, you have your entire life to do a job and to learn dentistry. But this one year of entrance exam preparation, you will not get this time again. You will not get another attempt at NEET MDS without wasting any time. So you have this time. It's golden. Make the best use of it. Start from four to five hours. Interns, as and when your internship gets over, again, you can transition from four to five hours to, let's say, you know, eight to ten hours. And eventually, as the exam comes close, 12 hours is a doable time. Now, how your timetable should look? Your timetable should look exactly like this. You should have slots for everything. Get up, freshen up, take bath, read, breakfast, read, rest, read, break, read, lunch, read. So that is how your micro you know micro manage your time you need to make sure that you need to stick to it at least the academic part let's say you have written five chapters i'll do i'll do five papers from this mcq book i will revise these many chapters of the previous subject if you have done that at least 80 to 90 percent of that should be finished second thing buffers can you see the sunday over here i would not suggest to keep the entire sunday blank but you need to have two to three buffers in your week a empty window of let's say two hours wherein whatever you didn't finish in the time should be done in that time. Otherwise, what happens is it's a snowball effect. Today, one chapter is left. Tomorrow, another one chapter is left. After a few days, another one chapter is left. And at the end of the month, 20 chapters are left. So, you know, that should not happen. You need to have buffers in your time. <coughs> buffers in your timetable, which will allow you to, uh, you know, uh, cope up with any of the lag that you're having in the timetable. Mark your exam dates wherein uh, we keep having these uh, grand exams monthly. So mark your exam dates. Make sure that your timetable is set according to those exam dates. Make sure that you have finished revision of those subjects by those exam dates. So that is how you have to plan your timetable. Okay. Uh, whenever you are making your timetable, make sure that you keep your active time for the new things or concepts. That What, what do I mean by that is, I am a morning kind of a person. I can get up at 3 o'clock and study and that is my fresh time. That is when my mind is sharpest. That is when my mind understands and absorbs everything. For some people, it may be the afternoon time. For some people, it may be the evening time. So we call it the active time. So for that time, we need to keep it for the new subject, the subject which we are reading for the first time. Or let's say, uh, learning of theoretical values or let's say, you know, coming up, understanding a concept that should be done in your active time. Wherein uh, we tend to after lunch or after dinner, we tend to become a bit drowsy and, you know, the attention span or the understanding of the brain comes down a bit. That can be kept for the passive things. For example, you can keep it for revision. Last week you read something, but you want to revise it. Let's say some DM numerical values or something that should be done in your passive time because your brain is still absorbing, but its capacity is not as good to understand or remember the new things but it works good for revision so that is how your active and passive time should be divided this last line over here right here is a golden line today i study anatomy tomorrow i study oral path third day i study <coughs> excuse me third day i study perio by the time i study perio the anat is totally gone it should not happen like that there is a concept called simultaneous revision when i finish anat and i start opath i'm revising anat when i finish opath and i'm doing perio i'm revising opath and that is how your simultaneous revision should go on we should we don't have to wait for uh, you know all the subjects to finish one to start their revision because by that time anat will start looking biochemistry will start looking totally new did i read this did i mark this underline over here i have no absolutely no memory of it so that is how our memory is very funny and until and unless you keep revising what you have done, you are going to forget it all by the end of a year. 10 to 12 months is a very long period of time. So whatever you have studied in January, expecting that you are going to remember it in December is, a, is not a very wise thing to do. Okay. So at least two hours of every day should be for the revision of the previous subjects. So you keep revising your previous subject. So let's say I am doing OP today, oral path, and then I am revising an ad. So every time we are doing two subjects, it also helps that, you know, once um, you are doing, let's say, OP and you get bored of it and you are still, you want to study, you can again go back to an ad. Okay, let me just revise an ad. So that is how always doing two subjects together works out. Golden rule, read, revise, repeat. 
until and unless you have done revision of anything that you did let's say i did sharan i did very thoroughly i did all the concepts i have understood everything today okay until and unless i'm going to revise it i'm not going to remember it on the day of the exam so there are uh, the, the, make notes from sharan and keep revising okay the, making notes is one part it is just for the sake that you don't have to go back to that book again okay but the second part of it is to revise when i whenever i'm doing let's say x subject i'm revising y subject that also helps you that by the time you are done with one round of all the subjects you have done with the second round also of all the subjects because first you did it properly thoroughly through all the things that were given and second time using your basic mcq book app and the notes that you made you have revised it also by the time one round is finished okay so that is how this rule read revise repeat is going to help you okay how many time how much time should i take for uh, every subject now again depending on the length of subject this may vary from one week to two weeks okay uh, smaller subjects like da and all can be done finished in four five days longer subjects let's say prostho especially can be taken up to two weeks you know uh, 10 to 15 days okay so average i would say it's 10 day per subject based on the time that you have round one what do i mean by round one round one is when you're doing it for the first time when you're doing the textbook you're doing one mcq book you're doing let's say some extra book you are doing app you're doing everything for the first time that is your round one that is when you need the most time that is when you you have the time to go into details after that you may just make notes from everything 10 to 20 pages per subject and then second time when you come back to it only your mcq book app notes that's all no time to go back to anything especially textbooks don't make the mistake of going back to the textbooks until and unless it's to verify a particular fact no going back to textbooks after round one okay make detailed timetable as i said micromanage your timetable and you know keep time for everything keep buffers make it realistic what is my capacity you need to make your timetable which has to include the breaks and buffers okay <clears throat> importance of giving tests you need to keep giving tests today i finished anatomy i have finished pulse i have finished all the questions i have finished all extra books here there everything but if i don't give test i don't know what kind of questions are being asked now i don't know what i what are the areas that i lag i don't know what my competition and how they are performing so giving tests is very very important okay one it makes you used to giving tests you if you keep giving tests the phobia of the main exam comes down it's just another test okay it gives you the idea of the competition let's say 500 people have written this test is your rank one is your rank 100 is your rank 300 and depending on your rank in each and every subject you can assess ki which are the subjects which are my weak point which are the subjects and where is my standing amongst the competition in general okay also it gives you an idea of time management because if you don't give tests and if you spend too much time doing only a certain set of difficult <coughs> questions you are not going to uh, make it you are going to just leave the paper halfway so it giving tests again and again makes you used to solving that x number of questions in this limited amount of time that is there okay and also it is an objective parameter as in where and to improve which subjects or which areas of a particular subjects you are weak in and how can you improve on them another question till when should i finish my syllabus okay ideally if the exam is in december you need a buffer of three months okay october november december you need a buffer so you can finish your september by uh, syllabus by september let's say it is for an exam in december and the next three months will be your round three and four of revision so remember when you're doing round one first the second round is happening automatically so by the end of september you have not finished all the subjects once you have finished all the subjects twice because you did it in round one and you did the round two when you were doing the other subjects when you were doing op you revised an at also okay so ideally by september october you need to finish your syllabus wrap up that is all subjects have been done from all sources at least once and then one to two rounds of revisions that can be done and then keep giving mocks keep doing previous papers and these things and that will take you all the way uh, revision yes cannot emphasize read revise repeat okay dental subjects are all volatile at least two hours per day okay this is we are talking about a person who studies let's say eight to ten hours that is the average that you need to study so if you're studying eight to ten hours for every day out of that eight to ten hours two hours have to be dedicated for the revision of the previous subject when i'm studying op i need to do two hours of and now that two hours are totally at your 
mercy when you want to do it you can do it randomly whenever you are bored with op or you can have as i told the concept of active time and passive time evening time after meals you can have those times for revision so that is totally up to you but revising a subject while doing a new subject is must okay you can also make sticky notes or you know small tables or something of the stuff that is most vol volatile like numericals or dm values or years author names those things you can make up you know small small things small small lists or you can have a small notebook for all these stuff which you find volatile and keep going through it today i'll revise all the authors today i'll revise all the dates today i'll revise all the dm values so that is how you need to keep revising that's how your brain gets used to it okay so i think with that i have covered more or less you know the commonly asked questions on how to study how to go ahead how to cover all the 19 subjects which book to study okay but at the end i just want to end with saying one thing there is no one size which fits all okay everybody is a different person everybody has a different pace everybody has different like some people may find microbiology extremely interesting they may remember everything about it so you know you can't compare yourself to any one person okay this person is doing like this why am i not able to do it so you need to assess yourself your capabilities your type of studying and you need to stick to it and you need to make sure that that works the best for you okay so make a timetable stick to it let it be realistic and we all will get there okay thank you